We want to welcome everyone to uh, Devotions at Southwest Radio Ministries. We're glad that uh, we can share the Word of God and some of these prayer needs with you, that the name of Christ might be lifted up. All right, we've got uh, several prayer needs. Uh, let's continue to remember Stacy Crabtree. The memorial service is for her mother on Saturday, and um, uh, Donna has the address, and we'll send the flowers. Uh, let's, of course, remember Susan and Amber and Patton. Let's also remember our others who we are praying for, Jane and Shannon. Uh, pray for them as well. And then pray for all of our listeners. It's really great to know that we get uh, prayer requests from our listeners. We do. Uh, sometimes we take them on the telephone. I get some. It's a great privilege to, uh, to pray with you. All right, we do have some prayer needs from our uh, staff. Anyone have a prayer need that you'd like to uh, share? Janice, how's Gary doing? Gary's doing fine. He had, we went to the emergency room again on Sunday night, but he's, they give him a, pill, a shot and he comes right out of it. Okay, so he's home now then. Uh, okay, so. That's, home in two hours. Okay, that's uh, Janice's husband, Gary, has been having some heart problems. Yes, Bob. He'll, he'll, he's still having some problems uh, from his surgery, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it, it, it takes a long time to, to really come back from something like that. All right. And also for Timothy, his wife, and their new baby. Okay. We but need to pray, pray for them. So that's for Kenneth Hill. Some of you know uh, Dr. Hill, my good friend, our good friend at uh, WHCB Radio in Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia, then also Timothy, the wife, and the new baby. So let's continue to pray for them. Any, any others? Yes, uh, Dave. Our pastor is going through chemo. Okay, Dave's pastor having uh, chemo. Is he starting now or? Okay, yeah. Right. One of our ladies at the Harmony Church has started um, last, last week. And, uh, okay, other, other prayer needs that we may have. For my wife. Right, Peggy. Yeah, how's she coming along? Uh, uh, not too well. Okay, that's Peggy Glaze. Some of you know her situation. And um, remember our country, remember the presidential campaign, uh, remember our men and women in the military, and uh, remember Southwest Radio Ministries as well. Um, I'm going to have, uh, Lord willing, the privilege of uh, personally interviewing. Uh, the Billy Graham of Iran, uh, April the 9th, Hormo Shariat and our cameraman and IT man, Marvin, is going to be coming along, so we'll be sharing some of this with you. We're doing all kinds of exciting things, and uh, just pray for our ministries. We try to reach out and uh, do some new things that can be done and need to be done, and what's so good about them is they communicate the message that we have always had. We're not changing our message, it's the same message, but there are a lot of new ways to, uh, to get the message out. There are new ways of receiving the message and making the message of Christ known, so pray for us. All right, do we have uh, any other spoken needs? Each of our, yes? I had to go to the doctor because of my stress test and stuff and it turned out that the stress test didn't turn out real well, so. I have to go have an angiogram on the 6th. Okay, Janice, an angiogram on the 6th of April. Okay. Okay. So, and of course we do have uh, the prayer request that our listeners send and our staff has those. They're looking at those. We want to pray for those folks as well. All right. Well, let me voice the prayer, I guess, uh, so you can hear it because I've got the little lapel mic. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to gather and we would lift up uh, these requests. Uh, we know that there are many more, but the ones we've mentioned, we certainly pray for those who have some very unusual challenges. Father, we do pray for our culture, our country, our society. Um, we pray for our youth, we pray for our moms and dads, we pray for our homes. We know that as goes the home, so goes the nation, goes the church. We need your help, dear Lord. We are a needy people, 
Evil seems to be coming in as a mighty flood, but we know that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, who loved us and who loves us even today. And so help us to follow his word, to listen to his word, bless this ministry, the work that we do. Uh, Father, we lift up the, uh, the prayer needs, the prayer requests that have been sent in to us. We know that there are some who are ill, uh, other challenges. Uh, we pray, Father, for those who, who need your leadership and who need your guidance. Bless and strengthen the uh, work that we support in uh, Pakistan. We pray for Pastor Victor and uh, the Christian school there, the church there. We pray for the persecuted church and for the great things that you're doing in the power of the Holy Spirit all over the world and especially in places that are very dark. Thank you for the light of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and for his glory. Amen. Okay, our prayer uh, memory verse is Psalm 67, 1 and 2. Let's um, recite that uh, together. If some of you may still want to open your Bible, that's all right. As long as we see it, it's a great prayer. And uh, this prayer is a little bit about, a little bit like what we're going to look at today in Psalm 22. Uh, let's recite it together. God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. God's saving health among all nations. So this is a, is a great prayer. It's Psalm uh, 67 verses 1 and 2. Uh, let's recite it once again. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. So this is a prayer that God's grace, the mercy of, uh, of Almighty God through Jesus Christ might be known by the whole world. All right, our intercom um, prayer um, times, we do have at 9.45 in the morning, we have an intercom prayer of about a minute or two. Who, who would like to uh, volunteer for tomorrow, March the 23rd? Okay, we've got Bob. Okay, then March the 24th, that's Thursday. Who would like to volunteer on that day? Okay, Dave. And then I saw another hand for Friday, Marvin. Friday, March the 25th. So we've got Bob tomorrow, uh, Dave on Thursday, and Friday, Marvin McIlvaney. All right. Any other things we need to share before we turn to the Word of God? Okay. How many of you are glad you're here today? All right. I see hands going up all over, and I'm glad I'm here too. It's always a great uh, delight to be um, with the crew here. We have a fine crew, and uh, you pray for us. We are human. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know that, that, this is not artificial intelligence. There's no robots here. We are human, so we need the grace of God, and we need your prayers every day and every moment of every day. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 22. Psalm 22. <clears throat> this is a psalm that is very appropriate for this time of the year as we think of the death of the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, the uh, Word of God should be especially precious to all of us. There are dark forces um, around us, uh, hopefully not in us. If we're, if we're saved, the dark forces are not in us. I don't believe we can be demon-possessed, but we can be oppressed. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians are... Um, oppressed. And so there are these forces around us that would destroy us, would destroy our families. Um, one of our staff said a little while ago there was a four or five year old girl wandering on the street, I think on 16th or something. So we're, we're mindful of the fact how there are horrible things that happen with families and little children are affected. And so there is this web of darkness that comes from the pits of hell demons are real. Satan is real. And sometimes when we get caught in that web, the web is so, so tight and so overwhelming. I remember uh, not too long ago, I remember seeing a beautiful butterfly 
caught in a spider web. Have any of you seen a butterfly or a bug caught in a spider web? Any, anybody? I, I, I like to look at it because it's a lesson and it reminds us of how much we need the Lord. But it was a beautiful butterfly and uh, it would flap and it would struggle. You'd see it moving and then after a while the flapping and the struggle would grow weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and pretty soon it would die and the beautiful color in the wings would begin to fade. You know, that was the sign of death. And the, then guess what? The old spider came along and he began to suck all the juice out of that thing. That's exactly how demon forces work today. That's how Satan works today. If we're not careful, uh, we can be caught into a, in a web of darkness. And that web is so overwhelming. Um, drugs, chemicals, pornography, uh, sin of all sorts, running with the wrong people. So I want to encourage everyone, those who are here, those who are watching, be very, very careful. I love that scripture where it says, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So if there's anyone around here, I don't think any of us feel that way, but who knows? But if you think you're standing strong, watch out. Be very careful. It's kind of like the, um, the GI who's out in Afghanistan. And you know, where they go out, um, where there may be minefields and stuff. Everybody's got to be really careful. Uh, this is not a playground. This is a battleground. We are living on a battleground. So let's um, think of how important the Word of God is. Now let me uh, just tell a little story. It's kind of... Uh, a little bit creative, but I use this creative story so that we can kind of get in tune with Psalm, 20, uh, Psalm 22. Uh, you may remember that President Kennedy uh, was shot, was assassinated on November the 22nd, 1963. I remember exactly where I was. I was on the campus of Adelphi University in Garden City, New York, about 30 miles east of New York City. Um, he was shot in 19. 63. It seems like a long time ago, but supposing we went a thousand years before that, supposing we went back to 963 AD, okay, a thousand years before President Kennedy was shot, uh, at a time when no one had even thought of the United States. Now, of course, God had thought of the United States. He's omniscient. He knows all things. He knows the end from the beginning, but Going back to 19, uh, 963, nobody had ever thought of the United States, but supposing a thousand years before the assassination of President Kennedy, somebody told all about it a thousand years before it happened. Supposing there was somebody who uh, wrote a scroll and spoke about a man of great prominence who would one day be riding down the street in a metal chariot without horses, okay? Use your, your imagination, that's a car, okay? The, in the presidential motorcade. And suddenly, uh, he is killed by this tiny bit of metal flying at several thousand feet per second, fired from a strange weapon made of metal and wood from a tall building. Now this is being written in 963, not in 1963, but in 963 and that the whole world would mourn the death of this man. Wouldn't that be an amazing prediction? I mean, if somebody wrote about that a thousand years before President Kennedy was assassinated, well, it would be even more amazing if the one who wrote about this assassination from 963 knew exactly what was going on in President Kennedy's mind, how he felt maybe in the last second of his life. Well, let's look at Psalm 22 because this is what we see in Psalm 22. Let me read the first three verses. Psalm 22, verse 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Now, who can tell us uh, where else have we uh, read the words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In fact, the, 
uh, the, the scripture even gives us uh, to, it, to us in the Aramaic, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, that is to say, by God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Where else have we read those words? Who's, right, it was, it's in the New Testament, the very words that Jesus uttered from Calvary's cross. He was on the cross and he cried out. And, and he used the very words that we have here in Psalm 22. Um, it's an amazing, an amazing statement. And I think what Jesus was saying, he's, he's saying this, I'm now on the cross. I'm feeling the way David felt a thousand years ago. Okay, so the Lord Jesus knew Psalm 22. He was so immersed, so filled with the Word of God. That's, that's what needs to happen to us. We need to be so filled with the Word of God that no matter what we're going through, what's happening to us, the Word of God comes to our minds. And so Jesus is looking back and he's saying, I, you know, David knew exactly how I feel at this time. You know, one of our, I'm a writer, Bob's a writer, um, and, and one of the greatest I think uh, tributes to any one of us is to have our work quoted by somebody. Somebody's on TV and somebody says, well, according to Dr. Bob Glaze has written in the Prophetic Observer and quotes Bob. You'd be pretty happy with that. Well, guess what? Guess what? <laughs> the greatest honor that Jesus, uh, that, that David ever received was that Jesus Christ was quoting David. Can you imagine that? And that's a pretty great honor just to have a human being quote quote him, that'd be wonderful. But the Messiah, the Son of God, was quoting the psalmist. And so here we um, see that Jesus was on the cross dying for the uh, sins of the world. He died, of course, to shed blood because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And furthermore, Jesus died on the cross to identify with us. You know, of all the religions in the world, there is no figure who identifies with, with people, except in the Christian faith. The Son of God filled our sandals and filled our shoes. You just think of that. All over the world, there have been kings and there have been leaders. And, um, you know, what, what do kings and leaders do? They say, well, I'm special. You know, they've got millions of people out there. Well, you're just peons. You're just pagans. But I've got the, the special clothing, you know, I, I, I'm going to eat the special food. I'm going to eat filet mignon. You're just going to have hamburgers, but I'm going to eat filet mignon. But what did Jesus do? He came to this earth and he ate the hamburgers, so to speak. He ate the beans and, and the, the potatoes and all of the food. He lived among us. So great was the love of God that he became like us in every way, yet without sin. There is absolutely no religion in the world like that. And I'll tell you why, because... The Christian faith is revealed from, from heaven. All of the other religions of the world come from the heart of, of man. They're inventions of mankind. And that's why there's no religion that speaks about grace. Only Christianity speaks about grace. Every other religion says, look, if you want to be saved, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to enjoy the, um, the sweet by and by, be good. Do this. Eat your bean sprouts. Fast. Shave your head. Do all of those things. Only that which is revealed in God's word from Almighty God says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that none of yourselves, it is the gift of God, none of works, lest any man should boast. And so here we have uh, Jesus during the days of his humiliation. He was like you and me in every way. We read of uh, uh, him, uh, he was hungry, he was thirsty. On the cross he said, I thirst with all of the suffering that he went through, the, the loss of body fluids, the loss of the blood, the beating, the anguish of heart and soul, the way he cried out. He was thirsty. Um, he even prayed before that experience. He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to drink this cup down to the bottom. Let it pass from me. But he said, not what I will but what you will, your will, I want to do. So Jesus was uh, human in every way. There's a marvelous passage in Hebrews 2. Let's turn to Hebrews 2. I want to read verses 14 through 18. And, and this uh, is, is so profound because you realize that um, 
one of the first heresies in the Christian church uh, in the early church was not a denial of the deity of Christ. It was a denial of the humanity of Christ. So this, this truth that Christ was fully human, also fully God, uh, he emptied himself taking the form of a man. This is one of the great truths of the Christian faith. So uh, some of the early heretics, they believe that, uh, that Jesus was a phantom. They believe that he didn't have a body. They believe that when Jesus walked on the seashore, he didn't leave any tracks. Okay, when you and I walk in the sand, guess what happens? At least I know when I walk in the sand, I leave tracks. Well, they said, no, Jesus wasn't really a human being. He was a phantom. He was a spirit being. Well, Hebrews 2 reminds us that's not true. Let's notice verse, four, uh, verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 2. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Okay, so the children of God, all those who, who come to faith, they're flesh and blood. And Jesus took part of the same, flesh and blood, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. He wasn't a phantom, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things that behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, like us, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor or comfort them that are tempted. So Jesus was truly man. Now, what, uh, what did Jesus experience for you and for me? Well, let's go back to Psalm 22. And, and I just hope that as we look at Psalm 22, that um, uh, so-called so Good Friday, uh, we don't, really don't believe that he was crucified on Friday, but we'll just go with the tom, uh, common parlance, the day when Jesus was crucified. We want to look at this so that the events of this coming weekend are especially meaningful to you and to me. So what did Jesus experience? Well, notice uh, verse uh, 3 of Psalm 22. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man a reproach of men, and despised of the people. What is Jesus saying here? I think he's saying what you and I have often said and uh, what we've often felt. We, we may be suffering. We may be going through some really <clears throat> dark waters, deep waters, whether it's illness, uh, whether it's some temptation that we're really battling with that seems to be getting the upper hand at us. We, we've all gone through this and we cry out, even as the psalmist did, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then we realize that, hey, God is great. God has delivered others, even as he says here in verse 4, Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. In other words, we remember, we know that others, and even we ourselves have gone through uh, times of testing, but then we say, God, why don't you deliver me? Why am I in this position? Why am I crying out? Why am I going through this this trial, it may be cancer, it may be sickness, it may be domestic abuse, domestic violence, it may be a rebellious teenager. So here I think Jesus was saying the same thing. Jesus was saying, yeah, I know, God the Father is a great God. He's delivered the saints of old, but why am I here? Why doesn't he deliver me? Why these nails in my wrist? Why these nails in my ankles? Why all of the suffering? And so in, in verse 5, he says, They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm. Everybody else has had mercy, is what, is what we sometimes say. Everybody else has been delivered except me. Have you ever felt that way? Sometimes we've all felt that way. We say, yeah, Lord, I know you're good. Lord, I know you can, can do miracles even today. Why don't I see a miracle in my life? 
Why isn't this situation taken care of? And then we go down to uh, Psalm 22, verses 7 and 8. It says, All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Now, these words express probably what you and I have felt sometimes. I know we've all witnessed, we've all, all told others how good God is. Jesus was certainly a, a testimony to that fact. Uh, David had told other people, he was writing all these psalms, he was singing all of these songs about how wonderful it is to trust in the Lord. But now here he is and he's suffering. They're saying, hey, David, you told us about, about God. Well, why doesn't God deliver you? That, that's the mockery. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever witnessed to your friends and then maybe you're going through some tough times and people are snickering? <laughs> you don't do drugs, but look at you. You're having a hard time. I do drugs all the time and I'm doing really well. <laughs> That's exactly the mockery that was being experienced. Jesus felt that. And you see, in Matthew 27, 43, it says, He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. So I think that was the real pain. David was a man of God. They would say, oh, look at you, you're a man of God. You want me to follow your God? Look at what he's done to you. They were saying the same thing to Jesus. You're the son of God, that's the claim you made? Well, your father put you on the cross. Why doesn't he deliver you now? That was the pain, the shame, the mockery. And I fully believe that while the, the phys physical, <clears throat> pardon me, agony of Jesus on the cross was awful, the emotional, the psychological distress that he felt, the shame, the disgrace was even worse. You know, he probably did not have very many clothes on. I doubt if he was completely naked. But for a Jew in the first century, even not to have your full smock on, that was pretty disgraceful. Here was Jesus with probably just a loincloth and, and his chest, his legs, his head was hanging. Just think of the disgrace. How would you like to be in that position. Now, probably today, in today's world, we don't think much of nakedness. Some of the people go around half naked, and it's not just at the beach, right? But back then, when they really covered up to be in this condition, when all these people were leering at him and looking at him, what pain. Now, let's look at verses 12 and 13 as well. Notice what he says. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. Now, who are these bulls of Bashan? Well, Bashan is a part of Israel that's known for its uh, luxuriant grass and the bulls of Bashan. A lot of bull, okay, a big animal. And I think what he's saying here about the bulls of Bashan and also about the ravening lions is that those who oppress me, they, they are irresistible. I, I, I have no defense against them. It's kind of like... You're in the parking lot, and whether you're a man or a woman, somebody grabs you from behind, and this person is so strong, you feel like you just have no strength. This is exactly, I think, what went through Jesus' heart. They've got me. They've put me on the cross. This is so, so painful. Now, let's jump ahead. There's many more things that we could say. We've got about two minutes, and uh, we do uh, watch time here because time is important. But let's jump ahead to uh, Psalm 22, verse 22. Because at the end of this psalm, we find out the ultimate desire and purpose of God. And that's the same desire and purpose that we pray for in Psalm 67, 1 and 2, that all the nations would know your saving health. Let me read verse 22 and following. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. I think Jesus is saying, when the resurrection comes, I'm going to tell a lot of people about who I am by my spirit. A lot of people will know about me. Verse 23, ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye seed of Israel, for he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, notice what he says, he heard him. God did hear his prayer. 
My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Now notice verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds or the tribes of the nations shall worship before thee. You see what's happening here. Jesus is now looking forward. He's looking forward to you and me. You know, we put him on the cross. The sins of the world, all the sinners of the world, put him on the cross. But Jesus is looking forward to that day when there's praise and there's shouting and there's rejoicing, whether it's in Honduras or whether in China, or whether in Pakistan or whether in Syria or whether in Egypt, whether in Libya, anywhere, Mauritania, the Congo, wherever, the Democratic People's Republic of, of, uh, of, of Korea, there's going to be that day when even though men try to stop the love of God, as Sister Mimi says, you can't stop Jesus. Jesus is looking for people. He wants to save people. He loves people. Recently, you know, the, um, the Democratic uh, People's Republic of, uh, of Korea, North Korea, they want to go to war over gospel balloons. Can you imagine? They want to go to war over gospel balloons because Voice of the Martyrs is sending thousands and thousands of Korean New Testaments into North Korea. And the North Koreans say, this has got to stop. We're going to, South Korea is going to become a sea of fire. And Voice of the Martyrs has said, you know what? That tells us that our balloons are getting across. Jesus is getting across. One day, I believe there's going to be a mighty revival. You see, all that was spoken of in Acts chapter 2 was not fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. There's a lot of things there in Acts chapter 2. I believe prophecy is literal, will be fulfilled in the future. Why? Because of what Jesus did for you and for me. You may be listening to my voice or looking at my face and my shiny head this day, and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. He loves you. He shed his blood that you might have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the matchless Savior, or Lord and soon coming King. We praise your name for your word for the power of your word, for the power of the example of godliness. Bless all of us. Bless those uh, uh, who are on our hearts even this day. Great, great sadness in many hearts, but we know you, uh, you are the balm of Gilead. You're the great healer, the great physician. You come into our lives and put them together. We pray for your grace and mercy to be shed upon all of us, all of our listeners, all who have sent in prayer requests. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.